Hi, I'm Zort, and you probably don't know me, but I'm an Ultimate Iron Man with way too much free time on my hands. Equipped with 2k total, over a billion items, and an opinion that nobody really asked for, I'm here to share my old school thoughts with anyone who will listen. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. So in addition to being a professional Ultimate Iron Man, I also happen to work full time as a software engineer. I see a lot of re Jagex, why don't you just ban bots? It's so easy posts on Reddit. So I thought it might be kind of cool to run through some things that I, as a programmer, think that Jagex could actually do to get rid of basically all bots for good. Before I talk about what I think Jagex can do, let's first talk about the different types of bots that exist. So the first thing to understand is that game technology drives botting technology. And there are a few different categories that bots could fall into. So let's start with some of the dumbest bots and work our way up to the most complicated. The first is a stupid scraping bot, something that is analyzing colors on the screen and doing really basic functions like picking flax, collecting an item spawn, basically anything that requires very little decision making and is repetitive. Bots like these wouldn't actually have to hook into a game client, they're simply screen scraping to perform simple actions. These bots basically don't exist anymore because they were easy to detect for Jagex even back in 2006, so you can only imagine how easy they are to detect in 2021. Next, let's talk about bot type number two. The second type of bot does the same activities as number one, except the difference is that it does hook into a client. So hooking into a client allows bot writers to leverage generalized library function calls. And for those of you not familiar, you can think of these as commands that tell a bot to do something like eat a piece of food, to move, to left or right click. And that may not sound really consequential, but think of it as basically handing bot writers a full toolbox that they can uh, leverage in their scripts. So instead of having to worry about those basic functions, they can just focus on the specific aspects of their bot without having to worry about coding those common actions. This type of bot should also be easy for Jagex to detect because there's very little variance in the activity it's participating in. Its clicks would generally be predictable and repetitive, and ultimately it would look inhuman when analyzing its actions on Jagex's backend. All right, now we get to the third type of bot, and this is where it starts to get good. So bot type number three hooks into a client and has access to the commands that we just talked about, but it also introduces randomization. Randomization is actually a very hard thing to do programmatically, which is why you may have heard of the term pseudorandom before. And essentially what that boils down to is it's a series of lookups done by the computer to try to simulate randomness. But the important thing to understand is that it's not true randomness. So bot writers are trying to make their scripts look more human by introducing pseudo random elements like activity breaks, misclicks, differing mouse movement, and click intervals. This randomization element makes for a huge step up from bot type number two, but the problem is that since random is really pseudo random in the programming world, it means that over a very long period of time, there will still be non-human patterns that can be detected by Jagex, and ultimately that's gonna result in a ban, even if it extends the lifespan of the bot before it's banned. Finally, we get to bot type number four, and bot type number four is the most terrifying type of bot. So this bot does everything that number three does, but it has one additional something that makes it a hundred times harder to detect, and that thing is input data. So let me explain. This falls into the machine learning category, and I'm sure most people have heard of that phrase, but really what that comes down to in lay terms is that the piece of software has access to examples of good and bad data inputs. For example, a bot writer could write a hundred different variations of a Zora bot script, each variation takes a slightly different path to get the base, stat, and quest requirements, 
Uh, they play different time intervals and they behave uniquely in various ways. So the bot maker can then run those bots for as long as they last until they're banned and then feed the results back into his system to try to make sense of what things caused the bots to get banned faster and which aspects allowed the bots to be more successful. From there, he can tweak his scripts accordingly and repeat the process with the newly updated scripts. Now, this is a massive oversimplification of machine learning, uh, but essentially it's the process of feeding your application sets of good and bad examples of the data to tune your program and make it more successful. This type of bot refinement is really on the cutting edge of software engineering, and it's a massive struggle for Jagex to detect because what happens is the bots learn how to play like a human would. They undergo so many iterations that it eventually becomes infeasible for Jagex to reliably be able to detect them. There is a counter to this type of bot, which comes in the form of machine learning, but this time on the Jagex side. Some of you might be familiar with the RuneLight bot detector plugin in the plugin hub. This plugin attempts to do the same type of thing, which is crowdsourcing bot reports to give Jagex more data points for improving their bot detection. The problem is that Jagex is limited to using their internal tools, which we know that at least until recently are pretty outdated. And in any case, this is gonna be a cat and mouse game that Jagex and botters play, where Jagex is always the one lagging behind. So to stand a chance, Jagex needs to change the rules by which the game is played, which is exactly what I want to talk about next. Part two is all about how I think Jagex can actually defeat the botters. And before we jump into specifics, I think it's important to cover who exactly is using bots and why. Bots are mainly driven by gold sales. I would speculate that the amount of bots being used by people purely to progress their personal accounts and not to accumulate gold, resources, or leveling an account to sell it is probably only around 5%. That would mean that 95% of botting would be driven by the RuneScape black market. Now, I don't have concrete data to back that up, but that would be my educated guess. So I think there's two things that Jagex can do to dramatically reduce botting in our game. The first is cutting off the demand for raw GP, accounts, or services. To reduce demand, Jagex needs to begin punishing the buyers of gold and services, which is something that they recently announced they'll be doing. If people know that they're going to be punished for buying these things, they'll be less inclined to purchase them in the first place, which then lowers demand and makes selling GP and black market services far less profitable. At a certain point, it just won't be profitable enough for bot owners to continue operating because the demand will be too low and they'll move on to other games or different black market spaces. The second thing that Jagex can do, and keep in mind that this is a lot more controversial, is force players to play on the official Jagex client. Today, Jagex can't differentiate between if someone is playing on a bot client, a cheat client, RuneLite, or some other third-party client. By forcing everyone onto their official client, they then control the player's interactions with the game. Now, you might say, but Zort, bot scripters will just write new bots that interact with the official Jagex client, and then we'll be back at square one all over again. And yeah, that would be true, except for one thing. Jagex has the ability to recompile their client every release however they want. Now, let me explain why that matters, and to do that, I'm going to give an example of how Blizzard tackles this very same issue for World of Warcraft. Now, I don't play World of Warcraft, but one of my fellow software engineer coworkers does, and he's explained Blizzard's strategy against third-party code. Basically, their game client is recompiled with randomized code scrambling called obfuscation. This happens on a regular basis because it's built into their deployment pipelines, which this doesn't change how a bot writer might hook into a client, but it does change where those hooks would have to be placed. So essentially, a bot writer has to reverse engineer the client, which is a lot harder with that obfuscation code scrambling, and then they have to adjust their code to move their hooks into the new proper locations. Trying to unscramble the code is a pretty cumbersome effort, and if the client is just recompiled every update, 
it makes it essentially infeasible for bot riders to keep up because by the time they finally do figure out where to hook in, the client will just be re-obfuscated again soon. Without bot creators being able to inject into the client on a timely basis, almost all of the effective bot types that we discussed in part one go away. Now pair that with punishing gold buyers and black market customers, and Jagex can essentially eliminate 90% of botting, with the last 10% remaining being easy for them to detect. Of course, that whole strategy is dependent on people being willing to play Jagex's official client, which at the time of recording, it's far inferior to Runelight, but that's why they're investing in improving the client now. If I were a betting man, I would wager that in two to three years, we'll see Jagex adopt this anti-bot strategy and botting as we know it will be severely hindered almost overnight. So that's the strategy. I think it's going to take a lot of hard work from Jagex to get everything in place for this. They'll have to bring their official client up to snuff with Runelate, which is going to take a long time. And then they're also going to have to be willing to take a much harder stance on gold buyers and black market service purchasers. With that in mind, I see this as something that is entirely realistic for Jagex to tackle. And I think within a few years, we actually will see them adopt this strategy. And hopefully that means that when you'll be walking around the game in two to three years, you just won't see bots anymore. And you can be assured that everyone walking around is a real human and they're there because they just want to play the game and have fun. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you made it this far, please consider leaving a like or comment. It would go a long way for me and I'd really appreciate it. If you think there's something else that Jagex could do to help reduce botting, uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. So leave that in the comment section. We can have a discussion. Other than that, thanks again. And I will see you guys for the next video. Take care, stay happy, stay safe, and I'll see you then.